Mammal Fear, and we've got big news in the world of Frost Giant and Stormgate on Tuesday, May 23rd. So about a week ago, Frost Giant invited over 100 creators, uh, casters and players and others, uh, to go to an online summit over the future of Stormgate, or, or at least the next year or so. We've got a sneak preview of the gameplay footage that'll be showing on June 11th, 4 p.m. Eastern on the PC Gaming Show. That's that Sunday, two weeks from now. I'll be co-streaming it on twitch.tv slash and the link is certainly down in the bio down below. And man, Me too. I'm actually so excited about it. I, we've seen this gameplay, right? That was at the summit last week. And it's short, but uh, it's got a bunch of really cool ideas. And actually some things in this video that I can't talk about yet uh, that will get revealed on that June 11th. So I can't talk about everything and certainly no spoilers for that gameplay that is, is going to be released. But what I can do is go over the screenshots that they dumped into my lap because after the summit, they sent us this massive package of, I think it was like 11 screenshots and then some concept art and uh, something that they're calling like a theme of show or look of show piece of concept art pieces. And well, we're going to be going over the screenshots today. We're going to be going over the gameplay or the in-game stuff today. And then tomorrow, all about the art, all about the lore that we'll be able to get into a little bit more. And uh, hey, I'm excited about it because the lore is awesome, but we have in-game screenshots, and that is just by far the most exciting thing. So if you're still with me, and I hope you are, let's get into it. <laughs> Massive package. <laughs> yeah, I I thought the same. Um, the definition of massive, you know, is uh, different for people. At that summit, we were treated to some insight into a couple units, not, not all of them, about four units of the human faction. Uh, that they'll be able to use in Stormgate. We also got to see some Infernal units, but that's going to be under wraps for quite a while. They don't have those built out yet. They're just ideas. From the human faction, we got to take a look at... Yeah, we got to we gotta get Diablo 4 shipped first uh, to get the, the Diablo units in Stormgate. They were the Ebac, uh, the Lancer, the Vulcan, and the Atlas. Uh, we can talk about the first three here. The Atlas is uh, kind of a key reveal of the PC gaming show, so exactly what it can do. So you'll have to take a look then. We'll touch on it. But uh, again, we're going to talk about these first three. I should also point out that this information represents a snapshot in time. The game doesn't enter pre-alpha until July, even if we're kind of chomping at the bit to, a bit to get into it. And anything and everything will likely be very different, maybe even significantly so, by a release or... Uh, any of the beta periods by the time you all maybe get your hands and get to start playing the game. So just, just keep that in mind. If something seems inherently broken or you don't like the design, these things can absolutely change. But now with that being said, let's talk about these new units. A as we get into the human units, we should talk about first about the overarching design of the human faction. Because, uh, the humans are a decently technologically advanced uh, faction, but they've spent a lot of their time developing solutions to a hot house earth, hot house earth or a climate change pre this infernal invasion all, all these storm gates in fact the sigma six the uh the sigma program is what they're using to solve uh climate change and things like that to kind of keep make earth livable sigma six was a last ditch effort uh where they said you know may maybe make a wormhole <laughs> maybe uh we can't save earth so we need to build a wormhole and, and go to a different dimension or another planet or something like that and uh unfortunately i'm so not sure if i missed this information somewhere. I'm very impressed that he remembers all this already. Originally, they brought the other planet to them and it caused an invasion. But what this means is that a lot of units will be repurposed from helping support our industrial roles, things to make things or, you know, perform agricultural services or things like that. Uh, this will then, uh, per Frost Giant, per what they told us in the summit, manifest itself with a lot of... Uh, Healing units and support units, units that are really focused on synergies, on working together, on allowing uh, more power in, in the sum of it par its parts than any individual unit. But with that being said, uh, we'll dive this next segment into the known and the unknown. At the summit, Frost Giant gave us a full breakdown of four units. Again, this Lancer, this Vulcan, this Evac, and this Atlas. But that being said, they did give us another unit that is called the Sky Rider uh, that we will be getting into as well. I don't know much about that. That's why we're breaking this up. Uh, because I like speculation. And honestly, it's new. So let's get started with the known. Every faction in an RTS needs a solid tier one unit. And the tier one melee unit, 
Now, there may be a... Actually, we know that there is a ranged unit. We've seen in some of the screenshots, there is a some sort of gunner type thing, some sort of marine, I guess, equivalent. We don't know how it's going to work, but we know it's going to be there. But we know that the tier one melee unit is this unit that is called the Lancer. Uh, it's a bulky suit of power armor. Uh, maybe we don't know what it was before, you know, that part of the Sigma program. Feels like, as I said before, and just in case you're tuning in late, feels a bit like a mix of a marine and a, a zealot. You know, like the suit clearly inspired by a marine uh, and then a lance in the hand. And it's got an absolutely massive land. It's Cloud from Final Fantasy VII with power armor. <laughs> now that you say it, is it a gunblade, though? I don't think so. I don't think it's a gunblade. Uh, this lance allows them to have a further reach than you might uh, the, another, another melee unit will. And that means that they can probably get the first shot off. They can get the last shot off. They're going to be really powerful at holding high ground early game, I would assume, because, again, you just data or a fog of a war plus longer reach. That's just a good thing. And it should give them an advantage just in general uh, in these early skirmishes that skirmishes that we can expect. Uh, as again, they're going to get that all important uh, first hit or last hit. They're also apparently, according to Frost Giant, incredibly tanky against uh, high amounts of damage. The best comparison of this is going to be what we saw in Wings of Liberty or Heart of the Swarm with the Immortal, where the Immortal, uh, at that point, their hardened barrier meant that they could never take more than, I think, was 40 damage from any source. So Marines were really good against them. They would do a lot of low uh, low individual damage, but a lot of it over time, high DPS. Sounds a bit like a Mountain Giant, right? Tier 1 Mountain Giant, Kevin, you like that? But Immortals would not do much, uh, not take much damage at all from things like Thors or Siege Tanks or things that were high damage per instance, but low, uh, low impact rate. So... That is going to theoretically allow them to have more utility into the mid game. And the other fun thing about these units, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to work, is that supposedly they're going to be able to deflect projectiles with their lance. So, we, yeah, now this is a little bit of kind of an immortal type idea. Uh, this sounds like Star Wars uh, sword Jedi kind of thing. So from this presentation, this thing has a first strike ability. Um, is super tanky and can deflect range attacks. This sounds pretty, pretty OP. Uh, but also kind of some sort of Eastern martial arts. We're going to run into the enemy and we're going to have a staff twirling. So we, we deflect projectiles, which in general should just make them even tankier, which again provides utility in that mid game. These, these melee units that run forward that deflect projectile shots that don't take a ton of damage from high impact damage from like siege units, for example, means that they should be able to make contact with uh, an army, even into the mid game, into the late game, which is going to be interesting to see how that one works. Uh, conceptually having... I wonder if some of these abilities are upgrades or if it's all naturally built in. Uh, of course, it's nice if... Early units have value late in the game. Um, it kind of should be that way. But it should also be taxing to upgrade them so they have longevity, maybe? We'll see. So they have absolutely no weakness. They probably lack in damage. Yeah, that make that would make sense. Two ways to mitigate damage like this. Seems like a, it's a little broken. And, um... If there's no heroes, early damage isn't that important because you don't lack creep speed. Right? It would only be the direct uh, encounters. And then you can hold with tankier units for longer to save your economy. It's not that your hero is falling behind level 3 to level 1 and then basically game over. Especially with kind of the enhanced melee range that they have. But... uh I'm willing to give Frost Giant the benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, and I'm excited to see how these things are going to play. Uh, I am definitely not going to Lancer Rush my opponents to death uh, for the first couple games. Uh, but in the air, though, the, these humans, or the human faction, will be able to deploy these Lancers through something that Frost Giant is called the Evac. It's not the Medivac, and apparently it is the earliest uh, air unit that any faction will have access to, and importantly here, it is strictly a dropship. Uh, no healing. It's not going to warp something in. It's not going to provide detection. It's not going to do anything like that. It's not going to have power structures. 
It just picks units up from somewhere and drops them somewhere else. It feels like a fine line for balance. Obviously, we don't know when other units get an extra mobility, but flying above cliffs, for example, early on, uh, thank you, Fate Stay Calm and Luigi for the subs. Um, to get that, like in RTS, mobility is super important. Plus it gives vision, of course, if you can fly. Not only that it can transport units, but it gives you a lot of vision. And vision is power, as we all know. Um, so I wonder how much faster in a tech tree the humans, Terrans, Resistance people get this dropship. Yeah. And what kind of tech tree it requires? Because obviously if you go that branch of a tech tree um, for this unit, you lack something else, right? Because you're not exploring that branch of the tech tree where you maybe get more damage or more support for your units. So this, there must be an opportunity cost to go for this drop, obviously. Which is such a nice thing from just a simplification of role perspective. One of the reasons that War Prisms are so strong in StarCraft or the Medivacs are so strong is that they do multiple things. You know, you need them to give mobility, but if they heal or they allow you to add war, uh, add more units into the fight, that is uh, conceptually kind of a broken thing that has to be kind of designed around. But these are just these are just units that, you know, say, hi, Lancers, you're here and you're going to go over here. Or hi, workers, or hi, other units that we're going to talk about in a second. We're going to move you somewhere else. Very simple, very, very to the point, and that makes sense because, again, it is an early game dropship unit. I, it does have... I wonder if... People will abuse this like a Zeppelin in Warcraft. It's basically like, a, it's only like an, a Zeppelin in Warcraft, right? But we've seen what people like Moon and others uh, did with the Zeppelin when it comes to out microing people. Uh, yeah, that can definitely be abused to a point. Let's imagine um, the Infernal units, it's what they were called, right? Let's imagine they only have Zerklings and they don't have anti-air early and then you get dropship. It's hard, but I mean, it's a very basic concept of RTS. I'm pretty sure they thought about this. One fun interaction with another unit, uh, but we're going to have to wait for July 11th to go into that. So uh, sit tight, you know, buckle your seatbelts or buckle your seatbelts because it's fun, but uh, we can't talk about it just now. But as we move on from the early game, uh, tier 1.5, moving on to tier 2, we get to talk about this thing called the Vulcan. Now, this one's been around for a while. Uh, the image of it is uh, on screen, the image actually that we have here. As a Star Trek fan, I'm confused. Was from the PC Gamer cover piece back in December. Um, but what we do now have is A, a name for a unit, it's the Vulcan, and B, some information on how it actually works. So if you remember the interview I did with Neuro... What, two months ago? Three months ago? It was a great interview. I recommend watching it. We also reacted to it. Two months ago, something like that. Actually, it's like closer to four months ago at this point. Anyways, the interview I did with Nura at the start of the year, uh, at one point, he talked about a unit that increased its damage output the longer it was just sitting there and firing. Uh, and he was talking about this Vulcan. Uh, this Vulcan is a bigger mech, which means only two of them fit in an back instead of, uh, I, I assume, four lances or four uh, work units, something like that. But what it does have, it has this big gun. I mean, you can see it. It has this it big, big gun, gun that starts to spin up and it's it fires Texas. damage in a cone in front of it. And the longer it fires, the faster the gun spins, the more damage it does over time. So like a void ray did, does, did. See, that's how little I know about Starcraft. <laughs> Which gives you a really solid kind of defensive emplacement. But the thing is, if that's happening... Well, you don't want it to move. And if you do want it to move, you want it to move as quick as possible so you can reposition so you can start firing it, firing again. Because I'm going to assume that uh, the Vulcan moving means it's not firing, and therefore, you know, it's not spinning up, and therefore it loses fire rate. So uh, the, the good folks at Frost Giant have decided that if something wants to get somewhere faster, you give it a jetpack. Now, that means these Vulcans, these are going to have jetpacks. Uh, they're not leaping. I don't think they leap up and over, not from what I saw, but they do dash forward or backwards or side to side. So you want to get a better angle. You can dash, you want to move forward, you can dash, you want to move backwards, you can dash. And the fun thing is, is if you dash in any unit that you go through, at least any enemy unit you go through, if you dash through them, they're stunned briefly. So uh, you have this ability to reposition, to get better concaves, to get better angles. And if you just want to take a big fight, you can dash right on through the enemy, which is going to give uh, between the charge up that we need to see 
and the this ability to dash forward and stun things and get better concaves uh we're gonna have some really fun micro i think coming out of these and yeah especially with the drop ships as well uh the evac thingies plus the dash ability that's quite some mobility and micro potential from just three units That's exciting. I mean, the, it's not often that we get fun micro from stationary units because that's kind of what inherently these units are. But I think we're going to see some, we might start to see some things interesting. Now, those of you that are familiar with the history of StarCraft are going to say, well, that's just the Void Ray from like Wings of Liberty. Well, yeah, yes, it is. It's it's a unit that does more damage the faster it, or the longer it's firing. But A, this is on the ground. B, it's a cone. And C, you know, you, you can go full linebacker on it. So yeah, the charge up mechanic is not new. But uh, it is certainly a different approach. Uh, the dash also, by the way, does something extra on top of just uh, stunning units. But to figure out what that one is, uh, June 11th, PC Gamer Show. Again, it, that's a reveal that Rush Giant's holding on to for the moment. But uh, I can't wait to talk about it. A, during then and then uh, after the reveal. Because it's pretty sick. I'm very excited. And then finally, on these units that we know a lot about uh, that, that uh, Frost Giant did reveal to us. We can talk about the Atlas. I just want to do it and give it its, its due here because I think the design is fantastic. I'm really excited about it. Uh, but anything in particular is again. So just from this concept art, it looks exactly like a StarCraft tank. Pretty much. The catapults itself when firing part at the bottom left. It is kind of interesting. Yeah. Here, because I think the design is fantastic. I'm really excited about it. Uh, but anything in particular is, again, we're going to have to wait until June 11th uh, to more. I just think it's neat. Honestly, I think it's really pretty. Uh, so I just wanted to have an opportunity to put its concept art up on screen. But, it even but I mean... It's not that StarCraft invented the Siege engine, I guess. Uh, it's a pretty common thing in RTS, so why not use what works? As Frost Giant gave us the rundown of these four units, exactly what they're going to do. I, I, honestly, as well as some uh, Infernal units that will be coming in the next couple months or so. I'm not sure when that reveal is going to be. And you know what? At least these units are exciting. Ah, dashy, AOE, splashy boy, and, and uh, Lancers and Evacs and things. But they have some designs of their infernal units that I am so... They're so cool. I can't talk about it. I really want to. But they got some really cool stuff that the infernals are going to have. And uh, we're going to have a video, we're gonna have a video about it, of course. But suffice to say, there's some stuff I've never seen in, a, in, a, in an RTS before. Or uh, interesting takes on some tropes. And they're very exciting. Yeah, I think I can't talk about that either. Um, interesting tropes is is a good description <laughs> for sure. Wouldn't overhype it uh, to say I've never seen this before. Uh, in a way, I think we've seen pretty much everything that's possible in some sort of way. Uh, but yeah, cool, cool spins to things for sure. Uh, that being said, though, again, moving back to the human resistance, because that is what this video is about. That's what the, the, the footage we have. Uh, as a special treat, Frost Giant also, in this package, they gave us these four units, right, that we have seen. And then one that we haven't. They, they, they gave us no context. They just, there's an image in the folder called a Skyrider in the asset pack. Now, uh, this is a unit that we, again, we don't know anything about. So everything I say is going to be uh, informed. I hope it's informed at least conjecture. Uh, so for me... This was clearly a science vessel-ish unit. Uh, this is, I think the purple thing is a mana bar. So yeah, let's see what Bayo is saying about it, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's guesstimation. I talked earlier about how the human faction will contain a decent amount of healing and support units. And it seems like of all the things that they've given us, this is the first unit of that paradigm that we've been able to see. Uh, visually, it's a green science vessel, likely powered by yeah. 
maybe a shrunken storm gate or the anima that we know the infernals are looking for it, it doesn't look like a terrestrial energy source and we can see that kind of that swirling energy in the middle that kind of looks like the in inside of the storm gate from the promo art that we saw uh granted it's green instead of red but you know these things can change maybe different power source i'm not sure and also, we can see a little energy bar uh, at the top of it. It seems like it will be reliant on energy to cast some spell. Uh, the fact that it is a green unit makes me think it's likely that it's going to heal that, or I don't know, maybe it poisons or something, and it goes full on uh, Science Festival and has like an irradiant type ability. Now, I don't know how I feel about this, because Frost Giant in the past has been criticized for its art direction. I mean, look at the trailer mech. Uh, it, the, the, the mech in the trailer just looks almost exactly like Diva's mech from Overwatch, uh, but this seems like the biggest misstep to me. I mean, we're going to, I have it on screen right now. You can see the Skyrider and you can see the Science <laughs> Vessel side by side. And not only are they visually, oh my, they may be different in scale, but they're visually very similar. They appear to fill the same role, a, a support. A support. <laughs> it is indeed kind of funny. Like these uh, thingies here are basically the yellow thingies. Um, it's floating, obviously. It has the little. What 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 are these red balls? <laughs> the same there. It is. It's really similar. Floating sphere in the sky that is a spellcaster that does support things. And as much as I fa a fan I am, as much as I am a fan of what Frost Giant is doing, some of Frost Giants and Stormgate's biggest critics have been saying I don't like the art. It's derivative. It's not there. It's it's just Blizzard 2.0. And well. This is that. I mean, this is a <laughs> this is a science vessel. You can't tell me other. Maybe it's going to do things a little differently, but it is so obviously the exact same design language that uh, this this is just such a this is a criticism on a silver platter for what Frost Giant is doing. I I I would love to see if some maybe there is going to be something new about this. Maybe it's just the still that makes this look wrong, but this looks like, it's almost identical to the to thing to the science vessel or maybe the. Yeah, and I said, like, we all say this before, Chad is saying it, I said this before, um, it's a lot of similar stuff. Like, we saw the first tier 1 melee unit, we compare it to a marine, we compare it to a zealot, um, then we see the second unit, the, the, the Vulcan, whatever it's called, see, okay, functionality of a void ray, uh, looks of a big marine, I guess, as well. Then we see the siege tank, which is obviously a siege tank. Uh, also, the, the infernal host units, pretty Diablo-y. They, I know it's a smaller team, etc., but they need to have something original soon, very soon. Mother mothership core, but really that science vessel, and human human faction support spellcaster floating ball with outside but it's almost identical so as excited i am i'm not a big fan uh hopefully this is gonna get we're gonna maybe get new iterations on this but yeah this is uh this is very repetitive and not kind of the innovation that we we've come to expect out of rush giant or that i've come to hope to expect out of rush giant a little bit but on that down note even as the ideas are maybe interesting uh let's move on to structures because we've got four new production structures as well as uh some context about that structure that showed up in some of the previous screenshots and uh, a new mining structure as well. So at the time, my guess uh, that that massive screenshot was that the structures we saw, the two of them were some sort of research building. But apparently this habitat, as they're calling it, is just the human version of the supply depot or the overlord. It's a supply structure. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, know. this is this is interesting because Monk said in an interview with us that um, stuff like this is supposedly inspired by Warcraft, where uh, supply buildings have a function. So I'm really curious what this does. Oh, is that these seem rather large and... Question in chat, do we really need supply structures? I think so, because otherwise massing is a little too easy. I think you can balance it. Like at the moment in Warcraft or probably in RTS in general, if you forget about a supply structure like a farm, ziggurat, etc., uh, you lose so much time and you basically lose the game. Um, but in a sense, 
this can be weakened by letting them build faster. It's a little annoying, it's a little bit of work, but if they serve a purpose on top of just providing supply, then I think you can make this cool. Um, or let's say rewarding to not forget about him. Um, but yeah, I think it's just to prevent instant massing. I get it. Feels so boring in a way. Yeah, that's why I said yeah, like uh, that's why mm, a moon will is so cool because the moon will is really helpful on top of the supply. So that should probably be the direction, uh, whatever feature you want to give them. That means it might be hard to fit them in bases, uh, which means that maybe you need more mat. Maybe the driver yeah, to huge. expand is not okay. Well, I need more money. I mean, that's certainly always going to be a driver, but I need more space. I need to build more supply structure so I can continue to build my army. Shout out, by the way, this doesn't look like you can put them underground. So they didn't copy the depot. <laughs> Which is actually a really interesting idea if you think about it. What do you say? That means that maybe you need more map. Maybe the driver to expand is not, okay, well, I need more money. I mean, that's certainly always going to be a driver, but I need more space. I need to build more supply structures so I can continue to build hmm. my army. Which is actually a really interesting idea if you think about it. That's uh, kind of space capping your main base is not something that we've seen uh, explored all that much. I mean, sometimes we'll see a bigger base versus a smaller base, but there's almost always room to you know, have your supply structures so you can expand. <laughs> A fake face. Okay, I'm whining about everything except farms is cool. So what you're saying is fix farms? Um, but yeah, what, what he said here, to need more space for your supply depots and that's why you expand. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. That doesn't feel right when like I don't want to feel claustrophobic in my base really I don't want to portal myself into a base I uh, that that's maybe something for like risk <laughs> I don't know or nah, that doesn't feel right at all just for territory Sounds lame. Mm, this is something that Middle Earth did, right? Uh, Fight for Middle Earth, where you only have a limited amount of buildings you can go for. No, 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 no. That was very limiting, uh, very restricted, didn't feel fun. I didn't like it at all. We also know that Frost Giant is interested in exploring buildings that are more than just a supply depot. Uh, something that It does supply depot, provide supply, plus something else. So... I wonder what purpose these habitats will serve. Is it research after all? Is it going to be some, is it going to build workers? I, I don't know. Uh, what do you think though? Uh, let me know. We got the comments section here. You should let me know in the comments down below. I, I'm actually really curious uh, what your what your thoughts are going to be, what your conjecture is. Uh, we also have something that uh, Frost Giant is calling the Therium Refinery. And I'm going to assume that this Therium is going to be uh, used as the second resource. Uh, it, if you look that at the top sense. of the building, it seems like it's designed to be dumped into rather than uh, extracted out from. We would expect maybe there to be an opening at the bottom if it was going to be extracted out from like the Terran refinery. But instead, it, it seems like a big bulking mining machine it's where meat you grinder. take a bunch of raw material and you dump it into it. And these It's a meat wagon, guys. It just lost the catapult thingy on the way. But this is the future of a meat wagon. Big grind, uh, grinding gears will process it down into something that is useful. And what that means is that if that's where it gets deposited instead of a town hall, or maybe on top of a town hall, you can do both. True. That means that you can maybe mine further afield. Uh, one of the kind of core RTS ideas for at least in StarCraft has always been, well, you need to have a base where you're mining from. And if you don't have a base, you're going to be long distance mining. It's very inefficient. It really doesn't work out super well. But what if instead of that, you could proxy your Therium reactor? You could uh, put... Four, four workers in an early evac and drop it in the corner of the map where there is maybe there's a therium deposit in whatever shape that takes i don't know and that sounds very command and conquery 
also like not only uh, the way resources are mined in Command and Conquer, but also they had these outposts like oil refinery or something. Kevin is saying so like Age of Empires with the gold spot. Yeah. That he makes it sound like that. And then you just proxy Ethereum refinery there. And now, uh, obviously, this depends on efficiency, on whether this is worth it, based on how Ethereum capped uh, build orders will be, how 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 much that is going to have to drive uh, expansion. But if you say you're playing, I don't know, the, the the human version of mech, and you need a lot of you need a lot of Ethereum, and you don't need a lot of whatever the first mineral is. Well, maybe you you can just proxy your your therium re reactors in the corner of the map with a with an evac, and then not expand too quickly, and, and play a little bit more defensively. So that if that is the case, as he speculates, that would open up another point on the map for harass. And if it's completely isolated from your main resource, this could hard block you in tech tree. As there, I don't know. Mm, maybe don't do the extreme. Like, gas, for example, is always very protected in your base. Uh, lumber is theoretically available everywhere, but you get it from your base, right? The core resources of StarCraft and WarCraft are always directly in the base. This would be a big step away from that concept. I don't know. That, that's an interesting idea. That was kind of this idea that was percolating around my head when uh, Frost Giant was talking about. So yeah, that would be similar to Gold and AoE. This would also be a lot more similar to Tiberium or Ore in Command and Conquer. And then I really hope the workers are not as dumb as these Command and Conquer. What, what's it called? Gatherers? I only played the German version. You know what I mean. Dumbest unit probably in any RTS. Oh, wait. That idea sounds bad, so you camp even more in your base, completely dependent on very weak outposts not being scouted. I don't... Like, if there's an objective out on the map, you shouldn't camp more. You should contest them and harass them. Harvesters, exactly. Things were gonna work in the summit. Like, ah, early evac. Interesting second uh, er, interesting second resource. This could be fun. Now, there's a lot more to this second resource. Uh, again, all we have is the name right now. There's gonna be a lot more to this second resource in the PC gaming show. So again, you know, I, I'm just saying it, but uh, be on the lookout for that one because uh, this second resource is, it's interesting. It's not, it's not like anything we've seen in StarCraft, that's for sure. And not like anything in a Blizzard like RTS that, that I can think of. Uh, so that's going to be fun. But moving on to the production structures, we have four. We have a barracks, a machine factory, a biokinetics lab, whatever that is, and a mech bay. Uh, the first two of these are self-evident. Uh, we can assume that a mech bay will produce mechs. I mean, duh. And the barracks will produce infantry, lancers, and gunners, and things like that. What we don't know, though, is what this biokinetics lab and the machine shop will do. Uh, my assumption is that they're upgrade structures. Uh, machine shop is where you go if you want to get something upgraded on your car or you get your bike fixed or you add something to a tank. And the fact that we have ammunition kind of scattered around this building maybe makes that make sense. Or maybe there are some structures, some units that ha that have ammunition that need to go back to a machine shop to get that ammunition. So like really kind of like a nuke idea maybe, but maybe with uh, less late game and maybe you produce more of them. Because again, those bundles of structure, or those bundles of uh, of ammo, of missiles, or of bullets, or whatever they are, are, you know, they're, they're more sizable than we would expect out of a nuke. And of course, the biokinetics lab is a place where research is done into how living things move. Uh, in the context of Stormgate, it seems likely that these will harbor upgrades for the mechanical and biological units respectively. Um, but I think... We might have several different upgrade structures in the game, actually. So the Biokinetics Lab, based on the name, would be specifically for upgrades that improve how your bio units will be able to interact with the map. Things like uh, Zealot Legs in StarCraft or Stim, uh, things that change how you, maybe a, a, a leaping upgrade or a boost, I, I don't know. But things that allow you to move in different ways. 
move faster, jump up, dash, whatever. That I think it makes kind of sense to... It makes kind of sense and it kind of doesn't make sense. You don't want to occupy your racks, for example, with an upgrade because then you can't produce units uh, the way it is in Warcraft. So moving it away from that actual production facility does make a bit of sense. Having to build another building for upgrades for units that come from another building is also not that great. So there's ups and downs to both. That is. But I wouldn't necessarily expect it to include baseline armor and attack upgrades because I, I mean it by armor. Well, maybe 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 armor, right? Because uh, you you develop the biokinetics, so the armor is easy to move in. But attack upgrades don't really make a lot of sense to me. Why not? Um, I would expect that to maybe be a second structure, maybe even the habitat. I don't know. But finally, uh, we. Hmm. Wait. Armor, well, maybe, maybe, maybe armor, right? Be able to interact with the map. Things like uh, Zealot Legs in StarCraft or Stim. Uh, things that change how you, maybe a, a, a leaping upgrade or a boost. I, I don't know. But things that allow you to move in different ways. Move faster, jump up, dash, whatever that is. So a little bit like Cyberpunk? But I wouldn't necessarily expect it to include baseline armor and attack upgrades because, I, I mean, it by... Armor, well, maybe, maybe maybe armor, right? Because uh, you, you develop the biokinetics, so the armor is easy to move in. But attack upgrades don't really make a lot of sense to me. But, <laughs> I mean, that argument doesn't really hold up. Because if you can make the armor lighter to move faster, you can also make the armor lighter to strike faster. Hmm. Not his greatest point in the video, I think. <laughs> Apart from from some good insights. Um, I would expect that to maybe be a second structure, maybe even the habitat. I don't know. But finally, uh, we've got a screenshot, just a uh, zoomed in picture for the map of what they're calling the hinterlands terrain, uh, which is the main forest biome that we've seen in other screenshots and other art thus far. And I, I do want to take a moment to point out that there are four levels in this screenshot. Yeah. Uh, StarCraft has recently started experimenting with that four or five level idea back in the last year or so, but that is something that has not really been part of Blizzard RTSs for quite a while now. So seeing this added in is going to be really interesting. Uh, yeah. In StarCraft, we're seeing it not produce the best maps yet, but of course, new game, new ideas. We'll see how that happens. Um, for more coverage, by the way, of the different terrain types that they are introducing, I got a video coming out tomorrow uh, on all the concept art that's been released that they sent out to us. And that includes uh, a couple shots of a new terrain. And then we, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the third terrain that they've kind of hinted at, but we haven't seen yet. And then I do have one final thing. This is a chicken. The file name uh, mentions that it is a profile portrait. Uh, is this confirmation of the chickens, uh, space chickens, maybe, as a third faction? I mean... In, uh, in Zelda games, chickens are by far your your most evil adversary it's in, in uh, Elder Scrolls. You know, you kill a chicken, the entire town goes after you. So it makes sense that the great villain, the great thing that unites the Infernals and the humans together is demon chickens from space. <laughs> I don't think that's likely, but that is one Imperial chicken staring down at us. But that is all the new screenshots. That's all the new in-game stuff. There's going to be a video up tomorrow again on the concept art that Frost Giant released and... Uh, as a reminder, I will be co-streaming the PC Gaming Show and Stormgate's gameplay reveal on Sunday, June 11th at 4 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv. Me too, mate. Me too. We give this a like because that was very well put together from everything that we've seen so far. Uh, good guy. Check out Beowulf on Twitter and YouTube. And that is, I think, everything that we know so far. Games that lack originality will never be epic. I think Blizzard games of the past were never truly original. World of Warcraft wasn't truly original. Uh, Blizzard RTS weren't truly original. They just did it the best. And that's what made them stand out. So I definitely disagree. It just has to... Uh, be the most approachable and I mean cinematics help 
uh, campaigns helped. Uh, the playability was just the best. It was the snappiest. It was the most responsive. And that's what made them stand out, but not the originality. Like, let's be honest, elves and orcs and humans fighting isn't the most original thing in the world. Um, humanity fighting aliens isn't the most original thing in the world. Uh, 